solver on your own. Um, uh, we have many uh, dependencies on external middleware. And in the process of developing those dependencies um, as part of our middleware program, we've created an integrated partner program, which contains, um, has a bunch of folks, many of which you'll recognize, um, that are either bolted into Unreal Engine and ship with. For example, PhysX, um, Go is right in. Bing is, uh, ships directly in. The FaceFX stuff is right inside Unreal Engine. Um, and stuff that is, uh, is uh, it's, it's add-on. If you should like to use, um, uh, for example, if you don't feel our user interface um, tool set is sufficient for your product, and you want to go deeper and do more, you have uh, an option like Scaleform, which is a Flash-based uh, user interface software. It's great stuff. Um, it's not part of the base Unreal Engine package, uh, but a lot of games, for example, Mass Effect, make great use of it. If you recall the um, the the flash effects of the user interface, and they had all these really cool things going on. That was all Scaleform. We, Scaleform's a, a, a great organization. Um, but every single one of these, uh, these when they're on this page, they sort of get the you know seal of approval. They pass muster with us. Um, they have certain requirements with regards to what they need to do to support you. If you should license their technology, what they need to do to maintain compatibility with Unreal Engine every time we um, we do a uh, an update. Uh, so you have, you have some confidence uh, when they're on the list. Um, well, let's talk about modifying middleware because that's the next slide. Let's focus on your core differentiation differentiators. Excuse me, in English, I didn't um, Only modify the systems that you need to uh, are, achieve your goals. Very important. Um, if you think back in time, a product called uh, Deus Ex. Great game, and that game had two programmers pretty much stuck with the program, um, didn't modify a whole lot within Unreal Engine, and two programmers and achieved a game of the year level game. It was absolutely fantastic. Brown Ripper game. Well, DSX2 um, had a bigger team of programmers and decided to replace a whole lot of the systems. They hacked up the audio subsystems, the AI completely replaced the rendering subsystems um, in Unreal Engine and uh, didn't have the same results. Good game. But it wasn't quite up to, uh, uh, up to par at first. And if you speak to the developers today, they'll tell you that that was a huge mistake, that they really shouldn't have done that, um, that they should have stuck with the program. Uh, you need to consider the risks. And this is exactly what they'll tell you. You need to consider the risks and the benefits of every change that you make, because the risk is a lot higher uh, than you're estimating when you're touching a massive living code base uh, like Unreal Engine. Because every time you go in and touch code deep in the renderer or the AI or deep within the code of Unreal Engine every time we do an update. And we do updates about once a month, once every two months, we do a QA um, blessed update. Uh, you have to merge that code in. And every time that you've touched the code and deviated from our base set, um, it takes you that much longer to, uh, to merge the code. That much longer means that much more um, money that you're spending on doing the merges. So you have to be really smart and you need to think about every time uh, you want to make a change like that. And honestly, our guys that are support teams, and again, I'm going to map this out to the broader middleware licensing. Um, you need to ask this question to make sure that the middleware you're using will help you if you absolutely find that you need to touch that stuff. Make sure that they're going to be available um, to, to walk you through it. Great example of, uh, of this is so we have a lot of MMO games out of Korea. Um, Unreal Engine does not support MMOs out of the box. Just we don't understand it. The network layer just isn't there. It's more client server based. So all of those guys, um, they come to us and they spend some time with Tim, uh, Steve Bolt, our networking engineers, and they ask us, how do we do this? And we map it up and say, okay, here's the way you should do it. This is the best way to go. Um, we're always available for that kind of stuff. That's what we get. Our job as a middleware licensee is to help our uh, a licensor, excuse me, to help our licensees be successful. Um, and support outlets. Uh, you want to make sure that you're contributing to support outlets. You want to share your fixes and your features because it'll help everybody and uh, it'll even help you. Um, those who have experience with Unreal Engine um, know that we, we, we don't support people by having a one you know, toll-free number where you call and talk to support lackey A and support lackey A then filters the question up to support lackey B and then C and finally it gets to an engineer who actually answers the question and then it gets changed on the line as support like EA calls you back. Um, what we do is that we have a communal um, support 
where questions are sent to the, the cloud, Unreal, um, these mailing lists and support forms of which everybody at Epic is involved in. And likely, if you ask a question based on the renderer, whatever the question might be, you're going to get Tim Sweeney's going to answer it. Or you're going to get Andrew Scheidegger, the guys who actually wrote the renderer, are going to respond. Um, you, and then if it's something deep, they'll maybe engage you directly um, in email or by telephone. But normally we try to do everything in the Unreal Developer Network, and then we post it, we archive it, so that future generations of developers can, um, can benefit from those questions. Um, and uh, right now, we've probably got about 10 years of support stuff archived in a, in a vast knowledge base, and it's uh, continuing to build. And we found that that community has really helped the entire development community, because now that we're global, a question may be asked, say, here. Somebody may ask a question here, and somebody in Japan will answer the question before we even have a chance to wake up and look at it. Um, generally, questions are answered quite, quite quickly. Um, and while we don't really provide a, a guaranteed support turnaround, um, we do have guys that look at things, and if a question goes over two hours long, it gets considered stale, and somebody starts banging heads to make sure it gets answered. Coding for your middleware. Don't modify for perceived cleanup. If you go into the code and say, that looks a little wonky, I think I'm gonna clean this up. Don't do it. <laughs> it's very risky unless you understand the whole engine. Remember, it's a giant, it's two million lines of code. You touch something in point A, you're gonna may screw something up in point B that you're not aware of. So just, if it's just a cleanup operation, just leave it alone. You gotta consider those costs, those merge costs, um, and the support issues that you're going to encounter. Um, just to sort of make things pretty in your eyes. And we've seen plenty of teams do this, and it's a big mistake. Um, you want to match your coding style uh, with the style of the middleware that you're licensing. Um, you can think about it like you're joining a new company. You know? So if you were joining a new company and, and you had coding style A, but the whole company had coding style B, it's likely that you would conform to coding style B. You would be much better off and much more successful with a middleware product if you match your coding style to the middleware style. Otherwise, you're fighting the whole way, and um, that will only be a, uh, it'll be an uphill battle the entire way. Go with the flow. And remember, you're extending an ever-changing two million lines of code, code base. This thing is a living beastie of code. Um, it's very successful, but if you start changing thing in one spot, it's likely that it's gonna have some uh, undesired, not likely, it may have an undesired effect another spot that you'd rather avoid. Um, so you really need to be smart about the changes in the, in the codings and the modifications that you're making. Embrace the middleware vendor's approach. Um, every middleware vendor that you talk to is going to have a certain approach that they're going to suggest that you use for them to be successful with their middleware. Um, they're probably right. They've been doing this for quite some time. And you should listen to them and embrace it because the path to success is much shorter if you're going with the flow and following the program. Um, as, as a middleware vendor who speaks regularly to uh, licensees, um, this is what we tell people to do. We tell them um, in the process of using Unreal Engine, use Unreal Script for most of your gameplay. So, um, uh, we, Unreal Script gives you a lot of benefits under the hood, like uh, persistence, garbage collection, resource tracking, so on and so forth. It's, all that stuff is going on underneath the hood. Um, Unreal Engine is keeping track of that. And if you fail, if you do something outside of Unreal Script, it's invisible to the engine, and it's you'll hit, you'll have performance, uh, you'll suffer performance um, hits um, as a result. Um, extend your systems rather than rip them out and replace them. Most of the systems in Unreal Engine are built so that they are extendable rather than um, uh, replaceable. Uh, and every, if you are to replace a system, again, we go back to that merge and support problem, um, which the more you do, and you will do some, don't get me wrong, every, every project touches the code in some form, but if you just go hog wild and do it, it the cost of more merging and support will become, become very, very large. Um, and most of all, use the editor um, to build your game, the world's tool. Use that to build your game. Don't go into a tool like Max or Maya build it higher level sets and then import it in max to Unreal because you, you lose every bit of the benefit that Unreal Engine is going to give to you. Um, again, Unreal Engine is keeping track of a lot of stuff under the hood. The preferred method is you use a tool, like a, a modeling tool, to build your assets as pieces, props, and you import